hope you're having a wonderful day. I just got done walking my dog. It's a really beautiful evening and a very cold winter evening too. I think we're going to have snow again. Today I wanted to talk about transverse myelitis and about Gillian Barre and the similarities and the differences in the two. But the reason I wanted to talk about this is I'm seeing I'm seeing mainly, well, both of them in the news a lot, but right now there's a, an uptick in the uh, diagnosis of Guillain-Barre syndrome in a lot of patients in a particular area of India, and many of those people are on ventilators. So with both transverse myelitis and Guillain-Barre syndrome, or GBS, both of them um, can cause profound weakness, paralysis, and can cause a person to be on a ventilator. I'll get back to what they're suspecting is the cause of this increase that's being seen in India. But right now, the I also want to mention the other couple reasons why I'm bringing this up is, have you heard of Wes Huff? He is a man from Canada who's a biblical scholar and then some. He's a lot of different things, and he's been on the podcast circuit a lot lately. He's been on the Joe Rogan show. He has also talked with Mike Winger recently in a podcast. And um, this Canadian scholar is amazing. And I listened to him quite a bit, but he did recently talk about being diagnosed with transverse myelitis when he was 11 years old. He mentioned what his symptoms were, which were uh, he woke up in the morning unable to walk. He had complete paralysis. He got to the hospital. He was treated. He was in a wheelchair. Uh, it was uh, he was unsure if he would ever walk again. That is how it is with transverse myelitis. Some people have a, a complete, you know, recovery and others have not such a great recovery and maybe have some residual paralysis um, in areas where they still need treatment or they might need physical therapy, occupational therapy for most of their life. Transverse myelitis is an inflammation of the spinal cord where Guillain-Barre syndrome is has to do with the peripheral nerves outside of the spinal cord and brain. With Guillain-Barre syndrome, although both of them are considered rare, I've talked about those sorts of things before where this is so rare, but then you, you know you hear about it all the time, you hear people talk about when they had it, their parent had it. I've seen it hundreds of times as a nurse. To me, this is, especially Gillian Barre, like a common thing. It's it's always been out there. So the reason, too, besides Wes Huff talking about it and people wondering what in the world is that that he had, um, I'm also talking about what's happened. Lately, I'm seeing on YouTube little clips on Instagram as you're scrolling. You're seeing people post pictures of their children who have been sick and how the children can't walk. Um, now... When you read the comments, I'm a comment reader. Are you guys a comment reader? <laughs> I read over and over again that people are still blaming immunizations for everything that happens. Um, again, Guillain-Barre syndrome, transverse myelitis, myelitis in general, these illnesses, just like influenza, the plague, you know, these things have been around long before immunizations and certainly long before the flu vaccine or COVID-19 vaccine. However, what triggers them? So what can trigger them? I'm going to put up a list, but let me talk about a couple things that can. Here are some common causes of transverse myelitis. Influenza, COVID-19, and viral infections in general, bacterial infections such as E. coli, pneumonia, strep, food-borne bacterial pathogens such as Campylobacter jejuni, now, this is what the thought is as to what the increase is in Guillain-Barre syndrome in those areas of India right now. The article that came out in India, hang on. Oh, I left my resources upstairs. I, of course, will list everything below. It's an, um, an article I read that an in India newspaper that talked about this theory on why there's an increase and what area specifically, I'm gonna list all of that for you guys. Fungal infections, parasites, immune system disorder, MS, autoimmune disorders, MS lupus, that kind of thing, and after a vaccine. Okay, so that can happen. But the thing that most people are seeing is somebody who has an illness, Guillain-Barre or transverse myelitis can be triggered 
after or during that illness. Let's talk about what the symptoms are. In transverse myelitis, like I mentioned about Wes Huff, he said his symptoms were, I woke up in the morning, it came on quick and acute, and I was paralyzed from the waist down. He didn't mention whether his paralysis moved, if it was, you know, initially in his feet or legs and stayed in his feet and legs. Um, gillian Barre syndrome tends to, tends to, but, you know, it can, it can be different areas, but um, it can start with tingling in the feet and lower legs. It is usually ascending, meaning it's coming upward and can then come up to the diaphragm. And that's where some people have to be on a ventilator. Some people recover within weeks and some within months. And as I said, some people have residual complications, particularly from transverse myelitis for many, many years. How is it diagnosed? Uh, history and physical labs, imag imaging to rule out other potential problems, and a lumbar puncture. So um, prompt attention to getting these symptoms looked at is really key. Getting treatment immediately and not waiting. What happens if you don't get any treatment at all? Well, you could have lifelong problems from the inflammation and the damage that it causes. What I don't like and what I'm seeing and reading in the comments about these children that parents are, they're showing a video clip of their child who can't walk uh, and people are commenting, you shouldn't give them the vaccines, that's what it's from. And then other comments saying, I don't trust the medical community, yeah, and I agree, don't bring your child into the doctor. Well, that's considered medical neglect. And if you were paralyzed or you had muscle weakness all through your trunk or you had difficulty breathing due to mus muscle weakness, we wouldn't think about not bringing in grandma or husband spouse. All right, some of you, okay, I hear you. But listen, it's not funny. It's a terrible condition to have. There are treatments and people need prompt attention and children deserve to have prompt attention. It's not something that you treat at home. As I listed what the causes could be that could have triggered it, there's so many, many others too. Um, sexually transmitted illnesses, particularly syphilis, like I mentioned, parasites and so forth. But if everything has been ruled out and there is no concrete uh, cause of what is being seen with either Guillain-Barre syndrome or transverse myelitis, then is, it's considered idiopathic. That means uh, no cause has been identified. The symptoms of weakness, numbness, paralysis, tingling, difficulty breathing, uh, falling down, I can't feel my legs. It's a very frightening feeling. And in some of these conditions with some individuals, it's extremely fast. It is very quick from the time that they feel the tingling in their legs or feet and the time that it progresses up to their diaphragm. Again, prompt treatment is something that's very urgent and the chance of full recovery really depends on the condition, the severity of it, and how quickly the treatment starts. So what is the treatment? Okay, Guillain-Barre syndrome and transverse myelitis have a lot of the same treatments. That would be steroids, plasma exchange to reduce the inflammation and limit the nerve damage, physical therapy, and other medications. As far as recovery goes, it does list over and over again in the literature that Guillain-Barre syndrome has a better chance of a full recovery in most cases. As far as transverse myelitis, a third have some kind of disability, a third recover fully, and a third have lasting severe issues like weakness, bowel and bladder problems. That the statistics have been shown over and over again that these illnesses have been around a lot longer than what you're blaming it on, the flu vaccine, for example. And that people who have had COVID-19 or true influenza have gotten Guillain-Barre syndrome or transverse myelitis as a complication of that illness, not as a complication of the vaccine. So let's look at some statistics. Studies estimate that about one in 60,000 flu infections can lead to Guillain-Barre syndrome. This means the flu virus itself is four to seven times more likely to cause Guillain-Barre syndrome than the flu vaccine. The exact number varies by year and by the flu strain that particular year, but viral infections, including the flu, COVID-19, and others, are common triggers for Guillain-Barre syndrome. How does this compare to the flu shot? 
The flu shot is linked to about one to two Guillain Barre cases per million doses. The flu virus itself is much more likely to cause Guillain Barre syndrome than the vaccine. Bottom line is, while both the flu and flu shot carry a small risk, getting the flu is much more dangerous for triggering Guillain Barre syndrome than getting unvaccinated. Again, back to if getting untreated. So if these parents are thinking it's funny to put, you know, snippets of their child unable to walk or walking on their toes and showing everybody their child and some people commenting, some commenting how to treat them at home. I say it's always better to be safe than sorry. And if it were you, you would want to go into the emergency department. Remember that not everybody that gets these parasites, bacterial, viral infections, are not everybody of course is going to get Guillain-Barre syndrome or transverse myelitis. I'm just talking about the two. Okay, just a little bit here at the end about the rise in India. Officials suspect that the bacterium Campylobacter jejuni, jejuni commonly associated with poultry, it's a foodborne bacteria, and transmitted through contaminated through food and or water may be contributing to, maybe contributing to the outbreak. It's The outbreak is mostly around an area called Pune, P-U-N-E. Did I say that right? The resources I'm going to list below, just like I'm going to list some resources about uh, numbers with uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome versus transverse myelitis um, versus if you get it, the illness compared to getting the vaccine. Just putting the statistics out there, although I know full and well that that doesn't matter to a lot of people and that's okay because like I've said to you all before, in my old age, it doesn't matter if people want to agree or disagree or think that drinking their bottled water causes these certain things without anything to back it up with, that's their prerogative. As far as my personal experiences, I mentioned we saw it a lot in pediatrics. Guillain-Barre syndrome was uh, a really common thing that we saw on the pediatric floor for those that did not need a ventilator. But if a child or adult uh, has any respiratory complications due to one of these illnesses, then they would be managed probably more than likely in the intensive care unit. As far as geography, where do you see it more? I did research on that and it did not list any place that had it uh, more common than anywhere else, except at the particular moment of January, 2025, it seems there seems to be a spike in India and they're thinking it has to do with a bacteria. I've had a few friends that have had Guillain-Barre and transverse myelitis. Um, most recently, I remember being um, in Hawaii and we were with a man that my husband was working with and he we were eating dinner together and he told me that he had just recovered from it before this business trip. And he said, do you know what that is? I said, oh my God, yeah, I do know what it is. What happened? Like, I'm really sorry you went through that. Uh, he told me about it and how he woke up with tingly feet and toes and that his, he felt, was related to getting the flu vaccine. And again, that could be, that can happen, but I just read the statistics on how common is it versus what the numbers say about if you actually get the flu and then get Guillain-Barre as a secondary complication. So um, he told me about it. He was in the hospital. He said that by the time he got to the hospital, it had already gone all the way up through his abdomen. And that's when he was getting quite scared that it was affecting his breathing because of his diaphragm. He made a full 100% recovery and he's doing fine, although he's never going to get the flu vaccine again. And I don't blame him. Things have changed a lot in each year. The strain is different each year. The coverage is different for the flu vaccines. Was it that particular one or not? Who knows, but it's better to be safe and not get it again. Well, we talked about transverse myelitis and Guillain-Barre syndrome, what the differences are, what is similar with them. Uh, Guillain-Barre being uh, somewhat more of a better response of recovery, it having to do with the peripheral nerves where transverse myelitis has to do with the swelling of the spinal cord itself. And then we talked about how it's diagnosed, what they have to do to diagnosis and that prompt attention getting to a healthcare provider or a hospital is urgent. That needs to be done as soon as possible. If you have to call 911, that's what you're gonna do. Don't think you gotta drive yourself in or you hope you can wait for somebody to come home from work to take you. Please take your healthcare seriously, take care of yourself, and I will see you at the next video.
If you like conversations about medicine, about myths and facts, about different topics like uh, what's diphtheria? Is it still around today? What's the plague? How are we treating the plague nowadays? What is it about the water issue with drinking water if somebody's diagnosed with rabies? These are all just some topics that I've covered with many more to come. Also, some really interesting oopsie medical stories. If this kind of thing interests you, please consider subscribing.